All right, Galatians chapter number 5, book of Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians 5, we have a list, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 itemized, 17 things in an itemized list of the manifest works of the flesh. And because I am the, the positive, upbeat, cheerful individual that I am, I'm bringing you a, a sermon on each of the nine aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, and I'm going to shove all of these 17 works of the flesh into one message. Now, isn't, isn't that just as, 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 as nice as anybody can possibly be? Because uh, I'd be the only one that could endure a sermon on all 17 of these works of the flesh. And so let's read together in verse number 16. This I say then, because you're saved, born again, I, I trust you, I hope you are. That's, that's the intent of the letter here. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Heavenly Father, help us tonight. Please help me to help every man, every woman, every young person that has come tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name, and amen. The, the assumption here on the part of God as he gives these words through his apostle, the assumption is that if you are saved, you want to do what is blessed and what is helpful, and you don't want to do what is accursed and what is harmful. That's, that's the Lord's assumption. And based upon that assumption, he says, it is not the world, it is not the devil, it is the flesh that keeps me from doing what I want to do. And so it's such a temptation to look externally and say the reason I'm having trouble living the Christian life is the government or the corrupt society or other people in my life or someone did something to me. And the Lord said, no, the, the opposition party in your life is your flesh. And your, your, your new man, this, this, this regenerate, regenerated inner man, guided and directed by the Holy Spirit in accord with the Word of God, is more than willing to live a life pleasing to God, which results in a life pleasing to you, to me, the individual. But the flesh always stands in the way of that. Always stands in the way of that. So that hour by hour, moment by moment, we are constantly uh, faced with, with one reason or another to choose spirit or flesh, to choose will of God or, or will, of, will of the carnal man, the carnal mind. Now, here, here's what I want to ask this tonight, and I'm going to read this together. Let's suppose you had a room to rent in your home. And the person who is coming to live in your home would be there every hour you were there. So if you're retired and you're home all day, they would be there all day. If you work and you're home eight, nine, ten hours a day, they would be there eight, nine, ten hours a day. But the person to whom you, you rent this room is going to be under your roof with you every minute you are under your roof. And two people, two people answer your ad and both of these people say, I want to rent this room from you. And you sit down and have an interview with the first. And you say to the first person, well, if you move in with me, what, what do you have to offer? What will you bring into my home? Verse number 19, this individual says, I will bring adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. No one but a complete fool would rent a room to someone who said, that's how I'm going to conduct myself when I'm in your house. You would never let that person move into your home. Sadly, 
that person already lives with you. But it's not someone trying to get in when you're not there. It's you, it's me. All of these characteristics are in what God calls the flesh. Okay? When, when, when I hear a person uh, curse and swear and take God's name in, in, and, and curse the name of Jesus Christ, filthy language coming out of their mouth, and, and, and then they, they, would, they would be offended if you said, I, I believe you could be a thief. I believe you could be a, a, a murderer. They say, How dare you? Well, it's, it's not a dare, it's an observation. You are manifesting that you are flesh, that you have flesh, and that was one manifestation of the flesh. There are several other manifestations of the flesh, but uh, people just, they, they don't understand or they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe they are capable of what God says they are capable of. Those are the works of the flesh. Now, the next person comes in and says, I, I, I'd like to rent that room. You look a little, a little shook up. Well, the, la the last guy was in here, I'll tell you, he, he really made me nervous. Uh, what do you, what would you bring to the table? Well, verse number 22, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Who, who would be your choice for a renter, the first person or the last person? Now, no, wait, wait, wait. What if the first person said, but I'm saved? Would that matter? What, what if they could give you a date on which they walked an aisle and bowed their knee and got saved? Would you, would you rent to them? No. No. So, if you're saved, there is someone living inside you who is capable of manifesting all these fruits of the Spirit. And if you're not saved, if you're saved or, or unsaved, but, but you also have someone living inside you who is capable of all the things in that first list. Now let's, let's, let's illustrate it this way. If you're married, you are married to someone who is going to be one of those two people whether they're saved or whether they're lost. They can treat you with the fruit of the Spirit, or they can treat you with the works of the flesh. And, and here's, here's why I, I use that example. Because people say, it, it's, it's amazing. People say, I'm saved. I'm under the law. It doesn't matter how I live. You would not find it pleasant to say the least, acceptable to be honest, if the person you were married to continually manifested these characteristics of the flesh, but said, I'm saved, isn't that enough? No, it wouldn't be enough. It might be enough for them to go to heaven, but you, don't, you would not want to be married to someone who committed adultery against you. You would not want to be married to someone who, who ma manifests hatred towards you. So then, when a person says, don't judge me, I'll live however I want, it is, that is the height of hypocrisy. Because you would not want to be in a relationship with someone who did to you what you want to justify doing to someone else. So it's not right for you to do it if you wouldn't want it done to you. That's, that's pretty simple. And so when, when we preach against these, uh, uh, against these sins, because God's against them, we, we do so because they are hurtful. They are hurtful to the person who commits these sins because these sins will damage all of your relationships, including your relationship with the Lord, which eventually damages you. And the Lord doesn't want you to live a damaged life. So here's what we're going to do tonight. And this, this, so we can get through all, all 17. We're not going to do our usual running of all the verses in the Bible that reference these things. We're just going to make sure you know what you're reading when you read this list. Is that, is that fair? Okay. Uh, by the way, you could, you could easily say, verse number 19, I wouldn't rewrite the Bible, but you could easily say, now the works of Hollywood are manifest, which are these. 
Now, the works of the vast majority of websites are manifest, which are these. And so, I, I, I say again, it's, it's important to agree with God that these things are hurtful. But if you agree with God when you're in church that these things are hurtful and then go home and feed upon them and commune with them and be influenced by them, going to church isn't going to help you a lot. All right, so here we go. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, as in thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, what is that? It is a married person having relations with a person other than their spouse. It's that simple. And people say, I'm a free moral agent. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. It's not against the law, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Okay, fine. Would you want your partner to sin against you in this way? You would not. You would not. And so it, it is wrong because God says it is wrong. God says it is wrong because he loves you and wants the best for you. And he doesn't want you uh, defiled and unhappy and, 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 and all, the, all the things that grow out of adultery. And so it is forbidden. And yet, listen, why would the Holy Spirit warn Christians not to manifest adultery if it wasn't possible for them to do so. Right. Okay, so uh, important. Second, the ne next list is fornication. That's an unmarried person having relations with another. So adultery, you're married and you're in the bed together. Fornication, you're not married and you're in the bed together. And you say, well, who are you to tell me what, what I can and can't do? I'm nobody. I, I'm not telling you. I, I didn't say according to my opinion or the way I see it or here's how I feel about it. I'm telling you God said, yeah. God said this will not benefit you in your life. This will hurt you in your life. I read, I don't know if I believe any, anything I, re, I read anymore outside the Bible, but I read that they, they do this exit polling, and you, you, some of you were expecting, um, you know, with all the crime and all the inflation and all the, uh, all the violence and all the corruption, you thought there was going to be a big pushback in the, in the election, and 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of unmarried women in America voted in a block and said, I don't care about inflation, I don't care about crime, I just want to kill babies. They cast their vote for the people that would allow them to have an abortion. Now, what they did is they voted for the people who would allow them to fornicate without consequences. Okay, and so... <laughs> What you never hear, what you, what you never hear, you, you hear um, young women, college women interviewed about nobody should tell me what I can and can't do with my body. You don't, hear, you don't get interviews with 70 and 75 year old women who now have no daughter, no granddaughter, no, and who look back every day of their life with regret for what they, they have done. And the Lord, the Lord doesn't want you that way. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want you girls waking up on a Sunday morning when you could have been in church and wondering where the guy went who's told you last night in the bar that he loved you. He doesn't want you doing that. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you boys, instead of start, uh, starting out uh, with, a, with a career and working your way up in the world, he doesn't want you starting out at 21 years old with a minimum wage job and two babies by two women that don't care about you and you don't care about them. Amen. Lord, he's concerned about you. He's concerned about you. He's, he's got your best interest in, in mind. And then the next in there is uh, uncleanness. Uncleanness. That's the indulgence of lust. Now, now, boys, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I got to go through this quick as I can. We're in mixed company here, and we got adults, and we got children here. But <laughs> it's adultery. It's adultery if it's you and you're married and you're with another real woman. 
It's fornication if it's you and you're not married and you're with another real woman. It's uncleanness if it's you and it's not a real woman, it's an image on a computer screen. It's dirty. It's just dirty. You say, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, you wouldn't do it in church. You wouldn't brag about doing it in church. You wouldn't send out an email, say, hey, everybody, pray for me. I'm going to look at pornography this afternoon. Yeah. Now, you'd say, pray for me, I'm going to get married, because marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. Amen. But if you wouldn't want people knowing that you were doing something that you're doing, it's something you shouldn't be doing. Right. If you'd be ashamed or embarrassed to get caught, and, and here's all I want you to do, fellas. I, I, I don't know what you do and what you don't do, and I hope, I hope this doesn't apply to anybody. Uh, here, probably somebody watching out there. You, you out there in Cyberland. I, I'm talking about you. <laughs> You know what you ought to do? You ought to just put a, put a little, type something out and just tape it to the top of your computer, tape it on the top of your phone, and, and, and it should say, that's some man's daughter. That's some man's daughter. It's unclean. And she's, she's probably a drug addict in slavery to the fellow making the movies. And you think I'm kidding, talk to a cop. I'm not kidding. Talk to a detective. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You think all these people just disappear? What, you, you think UFOs got them? It's unclean. Stay away from it. Lasciviousness. Now, if you didn't like the first three, you're not going to like this one. Lasciviousness, that's irregular indulgence of carnal desires. So I'll say this, and you can get all freaked out and grossed out, and then you go home tonight and read Leviticus, and you'll know that God knows man better than man knows man. If God says don't commit adultery, and a nation begins to accept adultery, and God says don't fornicate, and a nation begins to accept fornication, well, they, they, they have now become so emboldened against God that if God says, I don't want two men kissing and I don't want two women kissing, they'll, they'll thumb their nose at God and say, we're going to do it anyway. Yeah. And, and once, once you're okay with that, then you're going to start mutilating boys and girls. So, well, you know, I've, I've got a son, and, and my son thinks he's, a, he's a, a, a girl, and I've got a daughter, and my daughter thinks she's a boy. I thought I was a pirate. <laughs> What's I supposed to do, get a parrot and go steal a ship and sail around the Caribbean? Come on. Since, since, when, since when does a parent say to a nine-year-old, you get to be whatever you want to be? And if we have to mutilate your body for you to, to, to be what you think you are, it's so crazy. And, and look, next, next is going to be, that they're going to they're start justifying pedophiles. They're already, they're, it's already starting on the college campuses, because justifying the pedophiles. And then just, I hate to even tell you, if you read Leviticus, there's even a step down from there. And I'm not even going to say it here tonight because we've got boys and girls here. But, but it, it, you say, how, how can anybody go that far? Well, if, if you think you're smarter than God, you'll disagree with them on adultery and you disagree with them on fornication and you'll disagree with them, with them on uncleanness and then there's no stopping what happens to you once she's given, over, given you over to a rep, reprobate mind. And your country's full of reprobate minds. And if you think I'm crazy, oh, it's just some old guy. Isn't there that old guy up there talking like he knows? Okay, I'll tell you what, what I know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you if somebody knows what they're talking about. At six years old, at seven years old, at eight years old, my friends and I could ride our bicycles anywhere in this county. This county, anywhere in this county, and nobody would have laid a hand on us. We could, we could camp in the woods. We could camp on the roof of a Winn-Dixie store. Oh, did I say that? We could, you, and, and if they caught you, they'd call your parents, and your parents would come whip your bottom. Nobody was going to put you in a car and molest you. Now, you can say, throw out the Bible, that old puritanical stuff, no old, bunch of old people going to tell me what to do. Well, what have you gotten in place of this preaching? 
You're not safe. Your kids aren't safe. I remember they put the call boxes up all over Stetson University. So if you were getting raped going from building to building, you were close enough to grab a phone and, and, and get some emergency help. Well, how's that free sex thing working out for you? How's that don't judge anybody thing working out for you? God wants you safe. And you're not safe with people who think that any, they're entitled to anything they get their hands on. You're not safe. You're not safe. Idolatry. Aren't you? Okay, whew, that part's over. Idolatry. Works of the flesh, idolatry. That's the worship of idols, images, or anything made by hands, or which is not God. But it's more than that. Excessive attachment or veneration for anything, or that which borders on adoration. Now, a lot of people in your country... They go to churches and they, they bow down to they worship high, they, statues, images, yeah. right? You know that. But a lot of people go to concerts and do that. Amen. A lot of people go to stadiums and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Adoration, the heart's adoration for God shifted from God to someone else or something else that's not God. That's idolatry. It's idolatry. And the flesh is capable of that. Obviously, you know that. You see it all, all over the place. All right, witchcraft. That's, uh, this includes the practices of witches, obviously. Sorcery, enchantments, communion with the devil or devils. Now, here's what I, I believe sincerely. I sincerely believe this from research and from conversation and from uh, looking into it as far as I want to look into it. Not, not any farther as far as I want to look into it. Uh, most witches are like most faith healers. They're total frauds. And most necromancers and fortune tellers and palm readers are, are like most of these so-called uh, prophecy guys in, in churches. They're just frauds. But God wouldn't warn you against something if there wasn't a genuine item. There's a real thing. There are people in the Bible and in your world today, who are in communion with unclean spirits, which enable them to do supernatural things. That's, that, I didn't say great things, supernatural. Not, not according to nature, but, but outside the laws and norms of nature, there are people who can do those things and, and can tell uh, you know, fortunes and futures and that, that sort of thing. And what a powerful tool that would be to lure people in to the occult and lure people into following Satan. And so, uh, so the Lord said, I want you to stay away from all that. But your flesh will be inclined to have an interest in it. Yeah. I've always, just, just for the fun of it, there, this, this little shack up the road here, got the palm reading sign out front, the old beat up car. They just had a $2 billion lottery. You know what palm reader I would trust? The one that won that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember Dionne Warwick, you remember her? She had that psychic hotline. Yeah. Get one guy's preaching here one night. He said, I wouldn't call Dionne Warwick psychic hot, hotline. She don't even know the way to San Jose. <laughs> That's, I'm looking to see who's old enough. Yeah, yeah, all you young people that don't have a clue. Anyway, so I've always wanted to go knock on the door of that palm reader and, and say, you didn't know I was coming? <laughs> it's like, why, why would I pay a, a, somebody to tell my future who didn't even know I was showing up? <laughs> anyway, uh, here's why you don't want to mess with I, I saw uh, uh, this lady, she, <laughs> she at her funeral, they, she was so tall, all of her kids and grandkids, she left them all a Ouija board with a note said, let's keep in touch. <laughs> that, come on, that's, that's pretty weird. We... we we had a bonfire one night uh, out at Alfred's place, and all the kids brought their, their books and their, their records and their magazines and all their junk, and we were having a big time, and then we threw a Ouija board in there, and we saw some stuff coming up in the flames of, those fire, of that fire. It scared everybody so bad, we all ran, went home. We just got out of there. It was, you say there's anything to that? Now, there was that night, and it was, it was like 2 in the morning. We'd been working all day, so... <laughs> <laughs> Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but that was, that was a scary night, man. 
Anyway, um, I wouldn't fool with that stuff. And if you talk to these missionaries that work in these third world countries, they'll tell you in America it's cartooned up and it's glamorized and it's, it's smoothed over so it, it looks like it's, it's fun and games. But you go over in these third world countries where the devil doesn't wear costumes and he's right out there in your face and you'll find out these witch doctors and these shamans and these, these voodoo people and these magicians, they got something going on. But it's not helpful. Because it leads you away from Jesus Christ, the Savior of your soul. And so, so God wants you to stay away from that. All right. And right about now is a good time for this one. Hatred. Which is what some people feel when I talk like I've talked for the last 15 minutes or so. Hatred. Great dislike or aversion. Enmity. Is usually accompanied with uh, malevolence or malignity. Now, my flesh, your flesh, is capable of hating people. It is. It's capable of hoping people's lives go badly. My flesh, your flesh, is capable of wanting people to suffer. That's not God's will. He's not willing that any should perish. One time some men were rude to Jesus' disciples. They wanted to call down fire and burn them up. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I came to save them. And hatred will creep in. It will. Some of you sitting here tonight, in fact, a lot of you sitting here tonight, have had people do some really horrible things to you. And they don't care. And you hating them is not going to affect them. It's going to affect you. And you just eating yourself up on the inside, hoping one day the anvil falls on their head. It, it didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen today. It probably won't happen tomorrow. And you just wasted three days hoping somebody gets it in the neck that didn't get it in the neck. And it just, it just rotted your day. Amen. Amen. You, you, can't, you can't go hate. can't go there. There's a lot of terrible things happening in our country. God wants me to love lost people and tell them about Jesus so they can be saved. He doesn't want them to go to hell. If I, if I uh, more time in the news than in the Bible, I'm going to end up hating those people and not wanting to tell them about Jesus and not wanting to reach out and offer them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and then, then I'm in a bad way. All right, so hatred, then variance. Variance. We applied for a variance. <laughs> a difference that produces dispute, controversy, disagreement, dissension, discord. There are, I don't know, I'm not going to count tonight. There's a good, good uh, mediocre midweek crowd here tonight for our church, for most churches, this great midweek crowd. And if we started in the front row, no, not the front row, because these, these kids, they're all in, but we started with the adults here in the front row and then went back and said, all right, I want you to stand up and state one thing, just one, just one, about which you disagree with me. Every person here, could say, it would say, am I limited to one? Because we all disagree on thousands of things. And it doesn't divide us. It doesn't harm our relationships. You say, I'm going to get married one day, but I want to find somebody who agrees with me on everything. Enjoy single life. <laughs> Nobody agrees with you on everything. You don't even agree with you on everything. One day you're for something, the next day you're against it. One day something bothers you, the next day you don't care. But listen, when you can't maintain a relationship with someone who doesn't see everything your way, doesn't agree with you every time, you got the problem. That's the flesh. Honestly. My, my wife and I, we just laugh all the time at how few things outside of the Bible, outside Jesus Christ, outside we both think she's wonderful, uh, apart from that, we don't agree on a lot. Really, we, we are so different. Our personalities, our, our interests are just our, our way of looking at things. And you know what? Love, joy, peace is better than quarreling over everything she's wrong about. 
I, I can't help it if she won't get with the program. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? People go to church and I don't go to church. I, I, I don't go to church anywhere. Why? Well, I tried three or four churches, and there were people there I just didn't agree with. Wow. What a shocking revelation. Must be really tough not being able to buy groceries. It's just amazing. These hypocrites won't go to church because there's people there they don't agree with, and they go to stores and shops and work and a hundred other places where there's people there they disagree with. But they're not looking to quit those places. They're looking to quit church. And you're looking to get out. You'll find a way out. It's, it'll be right there. Okay, emulations. I'm, I pronounced that wrong. Emulations. <laughs> M emulations, which is really odd because e, ought to, e should be long, e ma latians English, so you ought to be glad English isn't your second language. It's hard enough as a first language. Anyway, what's, what are emulations? The act of attempting, now listen, listen, the act of attempting to equal or excel in qualities or actions. Rivalry. Desire of superiority, attended with effort to attain it, striving to equal or do more than others to obtain carnal favors or honors. Okay, let's not talk about uh, lost people because this letter isn't written to lost people. He's warning Christians about the works of the flesh or manifest, which are these, and one of them is emulations. Do you think it's a good thing to witness to lost people? I do. Do you think it's a good thing to try and win souls to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you think it's a good thing to have soul winning contests and competitions and brag on the people who are the best soul winners? Man, we got enough flesh in the church without turning what we're doing for God into something fleshy. Do you know how many churches tonight are being torn apart? Because that guy got the youth pastor spot, and that guy wanted the youth pastor spot, and that deacon wanted the promotion to assistant pastor, and the other deacon got the promotion to assistant pastor. And it's not lost people, it's not the devil, it's not modern versions coming in and tearing up churches. It's people that are envious and jealous and contending with other Christians for a spot or a place or a recognition or a steak dinner or a blue ribbon at the awards banquet. Just love the Lord and serve the Lord. Don't try to outdo your brother. <laughs> I, won't, I won't even come close to naming names, but I used to preach for a fellow who had a giant uh, ego, and, and um, he, he got up one time, and he had several of us there, and, and he said, I got Knox here, and I got I got, and he's, he's naming all these preachers, and he said, I just want to say on record, our church, I can out-preach anybody in America. And the people in his church all said, amen, and the, all the people that were there were somewhere else said, well, what are, you, are you kidding me? If it was true, who would say it? But he said it. And a few years later, he had to resign his church because his wife finally called the police and got tired of him beating on her. Okay, so who cares how good a preacher you think you are while you're punching your wife in the face? Now, now listen, that man would have thought, there's no way I would ever abuse my wife. Would he, would he practice emulation? See, the flesh. He didn't say, watch out for one of these things. He said, watch out for the flesh. Because once you let the flesh govern your conduct, you don't have a say in what your flesh does. Your flesh might do something you didn't give permission to do, but you just gave it the keys to the car. Uh-huh. And somebody, stop, stop. I wonder who that was. Stop wondering who that was. The point is, if you have a good prayer life, thank God, pray for me, pray for everybody else. Don't brag about how many hours a day you pray and how come other people don't pray as much as you do. That just stinks up the joint. 
I went out, I went out witnessing yesterday. How come you didn't go out witnessing yesterday? I had a job. Got a family. Well, yeah, but I went out and witnessed, and you didn't, okay, great. Did you go out and witness because you love souls, or did you go out and witness so you could come in and, and browbeat everybody else and exalt yourself above? Nobody wants to hear that. Amen. Emulations. Wrath. <laughs> See, he's, Lord, had to put right here. He's, the way some people feel when I, when I talk like this. Violent anger. Vehement exasperation. Indignation. God has wrath. You know why? Because he's always right. The Lamb, Jesus Christ, Son of God, you read in the Bible, the wrath of the Lamb. You know why? He knows who the real bad guys are. And they're both righteous all the time. I'm not. You're not. I don't know who deserves judgment. You don't know who deserves judgment. So the Lord said, wrath is not permitted you. You can get angry and then you got to rein it in before the sun goes down because if your anger turns to wrath, the Bible says the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Right. You get angry. There's plenty to get angry about. I'd be, af I'd be afraid of any man who didn't have enough uh, muscle in his wrists to get angry about things. There's a lot to get angry about. But you can't become violent in your anger, vehement in your exasperation. The Holy Ghost, listen, the flesh sees something wrong, wrath. The Holy Spirit, gentleness. See that? Vehement anger, fierce. Holy Spirit, goodness. One's of God, one's of the flesh. Wrath might be justified, but you don't know if it is. Most of what our, our desire to have wrath, most of that's directed toward the leaders of, of powerful people in, in government offices and that, and that sort of thing. In, in your Bible... There's a, a wicked, horrible king named Ahab. He, he's a monster, and his wife is worse. And if I lived under Ahab's government, I would probably like the chance to take him out. Elijah preached God, 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 preached God to Ahab. And when Ahab was an old man before he died, he repented and turned to the Lord. Now probably a lot of Ahab's citizens would have liked him dead and in hell, but God didn't want him in hell. And so the Lord let him live long enough to get saved. I, I, I don't, personally, I, I have my opinions about men and so do you, but what if, what if, in the luxury, five-star, multi-million dollar hospice facility, what if some nurse won Bill Clinton to Christ? What if some nurse won Donald Trump to Christ? What if some nurse won Joe Biden to Christ? That's what Jesus wants for them. He wants them to be saved. See, his, his view is far beyond elections and interest rates and, and mask policies. He's looking way out into heaven and hell. He's looking way out into eternity. And said, you guys need to dial back that wrath. Because you got a different objective than I do. I don't want those people in hell. I want those people saved. And I can understand if somebody's done you wrong. I can understand you uh, having these feelings of wrath. But you can't act on them. If you do act on them, you're going to forfeit years and years and years of your life. You just got to leave that stuff to God. You really do. Uh, strife. Next one, strife. That's the exertion, exertion or contention for superiority. 
You girls, you girls want to end up with no friends at all? Just think you're the prettiest and act like it. Everybody's going to get sick to death of you because they're all the prettiest. <laughs> and you guys that think you're the, I started to say hunkiest, that would, that would date me. <laughs> glamour, no, not glamour, that, that's 70s. Um, anyway. You, you think you're the prize catch, man. You walk into a church, and here I am, ladies. You know, go, that's, go, that's going to wear thin, going to wear thin. Honestly, honestly. Don't, don't, don't try to exalt yourself above everybody else. You know who did that? Lucifer. Lucifer. I'll exalt myself. You know what Jesus Christ did? He humbled himself. Lucifer wanted to be the highest. Jesus Christ made himself the lowest. And God took that devil. He's going to cast him all the way down to the pit of hell. And God took his son, Jesus Christ, and highly exalted him above every name, above every name. So don't strive. Serve. Don't strive. Live through the Spirit. God will put you up as high as he wants you to be. Amen. Seditions. Seditions a factious commotion of the people, a tumultuous assembly of men rising in opposition to law or the administration of justice in the disturbance of, of the public peace. Sedition is a raising or commotion of less extent than an insurrection and both are less than rebellion. Good word, sedition, sedition. We haven't had an insurrection in America. We haven't had a rebellion in America since 1860-61. We've had a lot of sedition. Had a lot of sedition. And if you're on the side of, of the seditious, it's a just cause. If you're on the opposing side, it's an unjust cause. One group riots, loots, burns, and the media says, well, it's a good cause. That's sedition. Another group walks into a building, takes some pictures. It's an insurrection. It's an overthrow of the government. It's... Now, listen. What the, here's what the Lord's saying. If you're saying, we're not, we're not trying to govern the world. That's the, it's, he's not writing this letter to the president or the governor. He's writing this letter to Christians. Okay? You're part of a church. It has a pastor. It has deacons. It has senior men. It has senior women. It has ladies who are recognized as helpful and counselors and men who are recognized as helpful and counselors. If you want it done another way, if you want some different doctrines taught, go rent yourself a building and see if you're as good as you think you are Go rent yourself a building and see if you're as influential as you think you are. Don't form a sedition within your church. Now the flesh can do that. And preachers all across America tonight are going to bed weeping because people they love and care for are practicing sedition within their churches and they're going to split that church and there's nothing anybody can do to stop it and it's a grievous work of the flesh and it's not conducted by lost people. It's conducted by saved people. Don't do it. We haven't had anything like that around here in a long, long time. Thank God for it. But if, if, if you don't believe what we believe... It's, it's not proper to, with subtlety, Genesis 3, and secrecy, try and draw away disciples to yourself within the church you're attending. Right. Declare what you believe, go start a church, and let people that agree with you go there. Don't, don't tear up something. Amen. If you don't like Italian food, go to, <laughs> go to a barbecue place. Don't like barbecue? Go to a vegan place. Be plenty of seats in there, and you can, you can spread out. And 
<laughs> Some guy sent me a picture. It's a fork with three pieces of steak on it. And it said, it said Dear Vegan, I killed that cow that was eating your grass. <laughs> so, so. Anyway, well, if you don't eat meat, that's fine. I, I don't care. I eat twice as much just to balance out the, the vegetarians. But anyway. So you don't think we should, should uh, uh, let me know, I don't want to go down that road. That's another whole road for, for another night. But it's an odd thing, isn't it? It's an odd thing. You live in a country where it bothers people to kill cows and doesn't bother people to kill babies. You've got to admit, that's really messed up. You want to abort a baby and protect a sea cow. That's really weird, man. That's, that's really, really, really weird. Strange business. All right. So strife, seditions, heresies. In Scripture and primitive usage, heresy meant merely a sect, a party, or the doctrines of a sect. Okay? So a, a heresy is if you got ten people in a church, a church that believes in the pre-tribulation rapture of, of the born-again believers, and you got five people in there who have been watching YouTube videos and have decided they're going to go through the tribulation. You are welcome to attend church believing that you are going to go through the tribulation. In fact, we'll leave you the keys when we're gone. You can... You can uh, meet here and, and uh, warm up your MREs and, or MRIs or RIMs or whatever and uh, have a good time and we'll see you when we get back. And, and that's, but, but if you're going to try to take your heresy and use it seditiously, now we got a problem. Now we got a problem. We had a, a dear lady... Uh, Dear, dear Mrs. Ossinger, she came here for years with a re revised standard version, and every time I would point out something from the, the Holy Bible that was left out or wrong in her Bible, and, and it wasn't to her, I just was pointing out what's wrong with modern versions, and she'd always look and she'd look up because hers, every, every time hers wouldn't have the deity of Christ, the blood atonement, the virgin birth, and she'd always on the way out the door, she'd say, I'm not giving this up. And I'd say, that's fine, but you're not spreading it. And we just had an agreement. Now, you don't have to agree with everything. But you can't teach things contrary to what's being taught, or you are biblically a heretic. Amen. And that's, that's, a, that's a work of the flesh. And so it's, it's not, a, not a good thing. Okay, envyings, envyings. Listen to this. This is, this is such a great definition of this word. To feel uneasiness, mortification, or discontent at the sight of superior excellence, reputation, or happiness enjoyed by another. To repine at another's prosperity to fret or grieve oneself at the real or supposed superiority of another and to hate him on that account. You know, there's so many people in America that are poor and miserable because they can't stand people that have more than they do. That's what all this socialism, communism is about. He's got more than I've got. I despise him for it. It's eating me alive. I can't stand it. He should have to give uh, half of his stuff to me. They don't give half of their stuff to people that are poorer than they are. Well, that's different. I'm poor. Well, you're not poor compared to that guy. Anyway, if somebody, somebody got a nicer car than you, so what? Well, don't let that bother you. Somebody got a nicer house than you, so what? Don't let that bother you. They just got more windows to clean. <laughs> Somebody got nicer clothes than you? So what? You only wear one thing at a time anyway. Somebody got more money than you? Be nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate them. 
Don't talk bad about them. <laughs> I don't get it. Everybody doesn't have the same opportunities in life. Everybody doesn't have the same advantages in life. That's, you're here for 70 years. Get through it. Go to heaven, get a glorified body, walk on a street of gold, live in a mansion, be a child of God with a crown on your head. Stop ruining your life bitter at people who have something you don't have. You're not going to get it anyway. <laughs> Just making you unhappy. <laughs> they go in. I, I tell you one thing, you got to admire, I do. I admire these people that go in, I, I, didn't, I didn't say good or bad, I'm just saying, I admire these people that have the courage to go in and pay a doctor to rebuild their face so they look like they want to look instead of like they look. I'd be the person that came out with my eye over here and my nose up here and my, I couldn't close my mouth anymore. <laughs> That's a big risk, man. How many of you remember, uh, what was that woman's name? Barbara Walters, remember, remember her? Come on, you, I'm not that old. Barbara, yeah, she, she was the first one I really, you know, when, when it first started coming in to do these facelift things. That poor woman, man, by the time she died, her eyes were on the side of her head. They had, they had pulled her face back so many times she could look, look, look. <laughs> Weird, man. Take up your chin so many times, your lips down here, it's just. You know what all that is? That's somebody that says, I wish God hadn't made me the way God made me. Amen. Okay, so you wish he didn't make you look like you look. Get on with your life. He did. Hoorah. Wish I could sing like her. Why not just enjoy her singing? I, I wish I could play an instrument like he can. Why not just enjoy his playing on the instrument? Because... Their talent's never going to be your talent. Their opportunity is never going to be your opportunities. Just take what you got and enjoy it. Don't get in the flesh and be sour towards somebody because they have something you wish you had. Young people have a real problem with that. Real problem with that. They're mean to each other, cruel to each other, insult each other about their appearance and insult each other about their clothes and insult each other about how much money their parents have and then these, these kids get covetousness and, and idolatrous because, because of the, 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 they're on the receiving end of, of, uh, of all this, these insults and stuff. You kids ought not do that to each other. I don't care what you look like, somebody thinks you're ugly. Yeah, so what? So what? So he called me names. That's pretty much as soon as we all our bikes hit the end of the driveway and we hit it off to school, it was name calling all the way to school. And as soon as a recess for lunch, it was name calling all the way through lunch. And then you hit PE and it was name calling all the way through PE. And everybody went home and nobody got medicated and <laughs> no, nobody hated each other. It's just life. Just called people names. That's what you did. And war started, you went and whipped the world. <laughs> you imagine this country getting into a war. They called me the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> that man tried to shoot at me. Time out, time out. I need a time out. <laughs> you better hope we can win this thing with missiles that are launched by people who think they're playing video games, or, or we're sunk. Man, we got the strongest thumbs in the world, but I, I, don't, I don't know if we got the strongest fighting force in the world. That, that's, all right. Just think I could have done this over 17 thir Thursday nights. What's next on the list? Murders. Murders. The act of unlawfully killing a human being with premeditated malice by a person of sound mind. You know, you know, that's killing because you wanted to and you meant to. It's murder. And it happens every day in the good old USA. And some of those murders are committed by people who grew up in church and made a profession of faith when they were kids. But they're in the flesh. 
and you get in the flesh, you'll do things that later you say you wish you hadn't done, but it won't get you out of a 30, 40 year sentence or life sentence. And then, how about this one? Drunkenness. Drunkenness. That's intoxication, inebriation, a state in which a person is overwhelmed or overpowered with spiritous liquors. So that his reason is disordered, and he reels or staggers in walking. Drunkenness renders some persons stupid, others gay, others sullen, others furious. That's the, that's the old definition. Reason disordered, reels or staggers walking, makes them stupid. Amen. Might not be dementia, it might be alcohol. Anyway, I, I personally know the man that took care of the, of the home and the keys for the man that you think has dementia when he makes a speech, and that fellow said he's just around the clock drunk, which, anyway, we're not, let's, let's don't talk about political things this evening. Let's talk about people inside the church. God wants you to have a sound mind. God wants you to be in control of your actions at all times. The more alcohol you consume, the less control you have of your thoughts and of your actions. You are, you are yielding control of your thoughts and your deeds either to the Lord or to the alcohol. Okay? And since you don't know on a, on a given day in a given life how much alcohol it's going to take for you to lose, lose your sound judgment or for you to lose your proper course of conduct, the safe rule is to not yield any of your mind or conduct to the influence of alcohol. Amen. Amen. The sixth drink doesn't get you drunk without the first drink. The fourth drink doesn't harm your thinking without the second drink. So the safest rule is just leave it alone. Amen. Yes, sir. That's, that's God's take on it. I don't know, you know, I need, I need, okay, now you say, I know, I know people say, I need to feel good, I'm depressed, I'm afraid, I have bad life, I've I, I got aches and pains. The fruit of the Spirit is uh, joy. How about that? Fruit of spirit is joy. So what you're saying is I'm saved, but I can't get from the Holy Spirit what I can get from a bottle? That doesn't speak too highly of your relationship with the Lord. Maybe you've got quicker access and more frequent access to the alcohol than you do to the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Can I, let, me, can I show you one, let me show you one cross-reference here tonight. Come to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 30, because all the time Christians argue with me, I don't see anything wrong with drinking. Well, it's not, it's not about whether you see anything wrong with it or I see anything wrong with it. What does God say? But I'm, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a passage that, that this is your okay to drink. If you want to drink, this is this is the Bible passage that tells you that you can drink intoxicating beverages. Proverbs 31 verse 4. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So. He, he, doesn't want, he doesn't want kings to drink because it impairs the judgment. Correct? Verse 6, Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Okay, so here are the people God permits to drink. Um, People who are perishing, people who are in poverty, 
and people whose lives are miserable, then you're out. If you're saved, you... The, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You will never be ready to perish. So you don't need to drink because you're afraid to die. You have everlasting life. And forget His poverty, you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're not in poverty. And how do you say to God... I'm going to have myself a drinky drinky because I'm miserable. When the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, joy, rejoicing, an outpouring of, of excitement and happiness from the heart, peace, long suffering. Now, the, the passage began it is not for kings to drink wine nor princes strong drink. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And verse number 5. This letter is from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us. Is that you? Anybody? Unto him that loved us. Anybody say, that's me. All right. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. Is that you? And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So I don't drink because I'm not going to perish, and I don't drink because I'm not in poverty, and I don't drink because I'm not miserable, and I don't drink because I'm a king. Amen. You might have heard of me, King, king James. You, you, might, you, might have, you, might, you, you might have heard that somewhere. So I, listen, I, I, I fully understand lost people without the Holy Spirit on their way to hell drinking. I get it. In fact, I wonder how some of them get through life without it, the condition their lives are in. But save people? I don't, I don't qualify for someone who needs a drink. Yes, sir. Praise God. All right. Verse, uh, one more, one more. Uh, revelings. Revelings. Anybody been reveling lately? That's feasting with noisy merriment, carousing, sampling chili, barbecuing, <laughs> throwing horseshoes. <laughs> well, no, we won't be noisy. <laughs> there, there is, there is, here, here's the situation. If you're going to come to church and whisper the hymns, if you're going to come to church and mumble about your blessings, if you're going to come to church and subdue your love for Jesus Christ and then go to the ball diamond or the fishing pier and shout for joy and, and laugh and carry on and make a bunch of noise, it's a problem. It's a problem. So it's, it's not wrong for a bunch of men to get together and... and cook an animal and laugh together. It's not wrong for a bunch of ladies to put on weird hats and drink tea together and little biscuits and laugh and have a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. When, when you require artificial merriment because what Christ has given you doesn't make you merry. Did I say merry? Did I? Um, <laughs> There's a problem. If I'm the Lord, and I'm not, I don't think I am, for those couple of you who think, oh, you can't see, no. If I'm the Lord, and I send my son to shed his blood and die for you, and he rises from the dead so you can have life, and he forgives all your sins, and I give you a home in heaven, and you can shout and laugh and carry on at a bowling alley and not at church, I'm disappointed. Disappointed. Happiest place in, in town should be a Bible-believing church Amen. full of saved people. 
It ought to be. It ought to be. And I, I, I hope that it is. So, well, that's, uh, that's not a good list. Not a good list. And then verse 21, and such like. <laughs> if, if he didn't mention my particular problem or your particular problem, that one too. So I'll say again, let's, let's, let me say, finish where I started. You wouldn't rent a room to this guy. So don't be this guy. You wouldn't want to live with this person, so don't make someone else live with this person. Easy enough. Easy enough. All right.